Ha, <laughs> loser, this guy says you forgot Link Cross. Well, yes, but actually no. There was an earlier version of the deck with Link Cross in it. Changes were made, and I guess that it played well enough that I forgot to put it back in there. Yeah, put it in there. It'd be def definitely be better with it. Plus, depending on the time frame we're talking about, it wasn't even out in the States yet anyway, so why would I care about it? Maybe because it did come out, but it wasn't here yet. But you can still play it online. Why in Galactic God's name would I want to spend all my time on the computer? Because it's not like there's been any tournaments going on. Right. So I haven't been playing. Until recently, anyways. You just keep playing those goats. How's that online shuffling been for you? <laughs> totally fine. you've been trying out. Ancient Gear 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 mocking a Cyber Dragon Meltdown, what else? How does that even... That doesn't clog up at all though. You don't miss pile shuffling. Nope, it works totally fine. Says the guy I watched literally just yesterday quit on every opponent that he had. Did not! Hey, hey, what, 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 why is that up there? Why, why can I see that up there? Because they can too, scrub. As I spend all my time on my phone. Believe it or not, there are actually many differences between playing Yu-Gi-Oh! online or on Duel Links versus playing it in real life. And in this video, I want to talk about some of those differences and why I prefer the traditional card game versus playing online. Starting with Duel Links, because Duel Links is a completely separate Yu-Gi-Oh! game, but it does have a lot of the same rules, like only being able to normal summon once per turn or not being able to activate traps the turn you set them and other stuff like that. Duel Links now even has a lot of the same more modern decks that traditional card game players have been enjoying for years. Duel Links definitely has grown to be more like the TCG over the years, but it will always be inherently less complex and there will always be less to remember than the TCG, uh, just because you have less of a board to work with. And that's really the main reason. I like Duel Links just fine and enjoy it just like I enjoy other Yu-Gi-Oh games and formats, but because it isn't a method or program that can be used to test the traditional trading card game, I've never fully committed to it. It's actually the same reason why I never committed to Rush Duels or Speed Duels either, because I was just like, why would I spend more money for cards that I already own, just, you know, reprinted when I could just play goats or something? Legacy format events. I do understand what they're going for by slowly adding complexity to build up to the trading card game, but can we use the cards that we already have, please? Another thing about Duel Links is that it is paid to win, but if you're paying to win in Duel Links, you're paying for non-tangible cards to each their own. I'm just saying I'm not the biggest fan of owning something I don't actually possess. It's not like I'll never play Duel Links because I used to, it's just I don't want to pay for Duel Links, you know? Plus, for all I know, the shuffling fucking sucks there too. No, seriously though, online shuffling is a problem and I can tell you from personal experience that at least at one point in the past, the YGO Pro guys did change their shuffling because I can remember a point of having to shuffle my deck in their deck editor and saving it that way in order for my decks not to brick, so... Yeah, it could be a problem. I actually still use that trick on Dueling Book, call it superstition or whatever, but um, I will say that I think that Dueling Book is the best online platform out there. I think for testing and community purposes both, it's just the best platform all around. Although I will say that I do like how much time EDO Pro saves. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And I do like how everything's programmed in. I do appreciate all the work that they put into it, but at the end of the day, Dueling Book is just the most like in real life play and that's all it comes down to. But online shuffling isn't just different from in real life shuffling because of card ordering alone. No, 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 no. It's different because of card thickness, how old a card is, rarity, all that stuff has more of an effect on shuffling than you would think. Matter of fact, while doing some net decking a long time ago with my friend Brady, um, we came across at least two videos, at least two videos of different GOAT format deck profiles where the person doing the deck profile said, I draw this ultra rare BLS Invasion of Chaos every game. That got our attention because just before we saw those videos, Brady was drawing that boy every fucking game. Oh my gosh, and it caused frustrations on both sides of the table too because he would either brick because of it, because if you open it and your graveyard's not full, that boy is a dead card. But on my end of the table, I would just get randomly luck sacked by BLS. 
at an increasingly alarming rate. And I have more experiences than just that. My ulti Sasuke, let's, let's just put it this way. It's not even first ed, and I don't even need to roto search it because in GOATS, I, I've probably seen it by my third draw. It, it just floats to the top. I, I don't know what to say. And another thing is I have a Mystic Swordsman ulti. Once again, not even first ed, but I'm so convinced because of my experiences over the years, just top decking the thing and just drawing it or always seeing roto. That's another thing. Super rare rotas for whatever reason for me in GOATS. I just see him every game. But what I'm trying to say here is seeing that Mystic Swordsman in rota that often affects the number of flip killers and stuff I want to play. It makes a huge difference. Still don't believe me? How about the fact that you can't play cards of different thickness or markings at Yu-Gi-Oh events? You can't even play Hobby League cards at Yu-Gi-Oh events. Did you know that? Because apparently Hobby League cards are thicker. Damn boy, they thick! So be aware of that for future events, guys, because I would also like to play my super shiny Hobby League cards as well. But they're not legal. People will rule shark you over them. Not to mention, sadly, we have a lot of weird players that are insistent on cheating at a game for dorks without cash prizes. And it ruins it for everybody. Which is exactly why the new rules regarding cutting your own deck is kind of a terrible idea because people will learn how to stack, people have done it before, they will learn how to do it again. Not to mention the biggest difference between playing in real life versus playing online, human interaction. Being able to at least cut your own deck right there on the spot and order it yourself and everything, at least to some extent, is just way more engaging. You, you engage your opponent more and being able to just shuffle your own deck in person, physically, and not just click a button is just way better. Being able to trade with people and have a cool collection of cards is also better and better for the game as well in my opinion because I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this are a lot like me and wouldn't still be playing this after all these years if you didn't have a cool collection or a massive collection of different Yu-Gi-Oh cards to look at and enjoy over all this time. So for that reason and also in the interest of card collectors everywhere, that is why I prefer paper over digital. And also the shuffling. Online shuffling's fucking awful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>